Hello, and welcome to the puppet shop. Say good morning, Kit Kat. It is very early in the puppet shop, and it's muggy today, so ugh, I don't do well with mug. It's very early, I've got my coffee, and today is a very big day. I'm gonna try to finish my puppet for the stage, the last video in this series. I think we can cram it all in. So this is, last we left, we had our foam puppet. Um, this is our monster puppet uh, in pieces. Uh, the next step is to make it look a lot more like how I want it to look. It's gonna be a fun day. So we're gonna be pattern making again. Remember we started from a clay mold and we made a pattern of that, enlarged it, not made the foam. Now we basically are gonna make is the skin. Now there's two products I wanna use, fur, and I might use some fleece as well. I can't quite decide if I wanna make the whole puppet in just fur or if I want like a fleece belly or fleece head. So we're gonna start with a pattern and then we'll look at my options and we'll make some, some design choices. But before we can do that, there's one more very crucial thing I have to do, which is the mouth plate. Mouth plates are the piece of, you. I use wood, sometimes I use plastic. That's Kit Kat in a garbage pail. She'll be just fine. The mouth plate is what goes inside the mouth and allows the puppeteer to talk. I have been making birds for so long for the starlings. They're a little bit more complicated because they're beaks. And usually there's a bigger top part and a smaller bottom beak. Inside is this wood plate with custom uh, leather or sometimes I use elastic circles that my fingers go in. And that allows my hand to stay put so I can puppeteer the mouth. This one is, um, well, this is a broken one. But you can see actually what's great about this is that's what it looks like. So what we need to do first is make a mouth plate and I need to make my finger holds. So when I put my hand in the puppet, it fits my hand and I can puppeteer the mouth properly. Before I started filming, I started making my mouth plate pattern. I took paper and measured the inside of the mouth, made a pattern. I made it in this paper first. Then I enlarged it because I wanted a bit more room for my hand. This is kind of every time I do a mouth plate when it's a custom puppet or a new puppet, sometimes it takes a few times. So then I used a thicker cardboard and I made this one, and I still thought that was not gonna let the mouth open as much as I wanted. So I ended up with this, which is my mouth plate kind of template that I'm going to use. And now we're gonna make it out of wood and uh, glue it inside. So to make this craft work, I need my mouth plate, I need balsa wood, I need some felt, which will be what you see when the mouth opens. I need my glue uh, and my saw. So uh, I'm gonna get going, here we go. All right, so let's make our mouth plate. For the mouth plate, I will be using my mouth plate pattern, balsa wood, leather, fleece, gaff tape, glue, barge, which is one of my favorite glues, elastic, I'll need scissors. I've got my coffee, which I'll keep out of the way. I'll have a sip. I'm gonna brew another pot. I might use my heat gun too to speed some of the gluing process up and a Sharpie. I think that's the bulk of what I need. Let's uh, speed it up and I'll work super fast. Here we go. Where my finger loops are gonna go. I have to mark everything pretty carefully because sometimes when you start putting things inside a puppet, you forget what's the top, what's the bottom, what's the left, what's the right. It's very important I get this right. So this is a mouth plate and really hard to hold on to, um, especially because it's quite a large mouth plate. So these finger holds are gonna just ho hopefully help uh, keep my hand in place, mainly so when I open up all the way, it will open up all the way. So we could do some sewing now. I'm gonna sew some elastic strips to plates of leather, and then I will measure around my finger and sew those by hand, and that's what my hand uh, will go into, and then we'll get to glue this into the mouth of our foam puppet, which I'm very, very excited about. Let's get sewing. I also wanted to show you, this is uh, my little sewing machine. It's got gets a lot of work involved, but this is a bag that lives underneath my sewing machine uh, made by Nancy and Henry in the costume shop. Uh, and it's full of Muppets and I love it very much. So uh, let's do some sewing and then I'll do some hand sewing and then some gluing and it will be great. So here we go. Let's work fast.
So we're moving right along. We have our custom mouth plate, since this is my puppet to my hand, and I feel like my finger connection points are really nice. I have a nice big open on my mouth. Hello. Ah. So now we get to glue this into the headpiece, which is always makes me a little nervous because this is kind of, this is how the puppet will talk. This is a crucial one. So what's gonna happen, there's a couple different ways. There's so many different ways. Again, what I love about puppets is there's not one rule, there's no rules. And every time I make a puppet, I feel like I either, it's just very custom, it's very a very personal thing. So what we're gonna do is sometimes when you put a mouth plate in your puppet, the foam will actually go over the plate. This one, I think I'm gonna have it go, it's gonna connect to the top and bottom. So it's gonna fit just inside. Looking at my clay version and my drawing, I'm not sure I have the nose on here that I that I like. And also I feel like I want a bit more of a belly uh, on, on the body. And another thing that I tend to do is when I get a mouth plate in, I'm gonna put some foam balls on the side of the mouth, which, which is gonna give it a little bit of a dimple. So once I get this plate in, um, I'm just gonna, before we move on to patterning for the fur, I'll just make sure that everything is, is looking the way I want to in foam form before we pattern on top. So I might even add a little bit more of a lip. However, I think I'm gonna do the head in fur, which is gonna make this lip, this transition from mouth plate to foam a little bit more fun looking. So time to do some more gluing. Here we go. So we have our mouth in. I want to let this dry a little bit more. Um, I'm very happy with that. He's got that nose kind of now that it's connected to its mouth plate, kind of bowing a bit more than uh, like I like. It's kind of slooping down here and giving it a bit of a nose. Talks really great and uh, the resistance to push up and down um, is quite nice. I don't want to open it too wide right now because the glue wants to dry. Ooh, we did it. We got the mouth plate in. I'm always nervous about the mouth plate. <laughs> Makes me nervous. So now what I want to do is add a little bit more detail to my head. Let's see what it looks like with the belly. Um, at this point, we're almost done with working in foam and we're going to move exclusively to sewing. Just going to take a while. So here's our body. Be careful because I have some pins in here. So that's where my hand is going to go. Ah. And then we're going to make this little neck piece. Oh, he's looking very nice now. Hello, I, I can't see anything. Oh. So yeah, I think I wanna put, um, I'm gonna put some foam dimples in here. I think that's gonna give him a little bit more um, fun expression. Give him a little bit more of a smile. Um, I think Vivian just got home from a walk. And then I think, I don't know, I can't tell if I want that nose to go a little bit bigger. I think I might, I might play with the nose a little bit. So I'm gonna play with some foam and some carving. Um, how I'll make things a little bit more pronounced is I would put more foam on and I'll carve and shave it down. And then when we put the fur or fleece on, it'll help round that out again. So I think I'm gonna um, just play with the headpiece a little bit. Uh, so I'm gonna do some more gluing and some carving and some shaving, um, some detail work. And then we'll move on to patterning, talk about fur and fleece and Ooh, it's getting, it's getting there. Oh boy. Yay! This is a meat carver. It's great for carving foam.
All right, well, so now our puppet's looking quite a bit different and I'm really enjoying it. I really love the nose feature. So earlier I talked about foam. I made most of this puppet out of dry fast or articulated foam. And then this is one of my favorite foams I get locally in town. It's a much more foam rubber. So I've replaced the ears in this upholstery foam, but it's at the rubber comp. Uh, component in it is heavier and I think the ears need to go a little bit bigger. We've added some kind of dimple cheeks and this nose feature and what's really great is I've got quite a bit of an overhang with the upper mouth which means uh, in my model I wanted a few teeth so that's pretty exciting. Then I added just a little bit more of a belly on it. Right now you can really see the difference between the two foams but that transition is going to change quite a bit when we uh, cover it in our, our skin, our fur or our fleece. And then let's not forget, we have a tail, which is very exciting, which will go along the back. And he's looking really, really good. It's looking a lot. I have my clay armature to my left, so I keep kind of looking at it and checking at it. I'm getting very, very pleased with how this is turning out. So I'm just gonna let this glue make sure it dries real nice and strong. I'm gonna kind of clean up my gluing area. In our model, we talked about making feet, but I don't think we're going to. I think it'll be only ever shown from from uh, from belly up. We'll put a little, um, there'll be a little tunnel here. So I'm gonna let this dry a little bit before I play with it too much. And next is to start patterning and moving on to fabric. So a lot of, uh, a lot of pins and needles and sewing coming up. It's gonna be so exciting. Yay! I have gone through my materials. I've taken all of the bits and bobs of my puppet apart. We've got the ears, we've got the tail, we've got the hands, we have got the head and the body. Uh, we have to make a neck, which would just be some fabric. So I've gone through all of my colors, uh, and this was the fur that we that I dyed in kind of a mix matchy. It's kind of some teals and some blue. I wanted I want this monster to look a little uh, worn, uh, friendly but worn. So I'm going to do the bulk of the puppet uh, in this fur, but I think a few features I want to do in my Muppet fleece or Aeron fleece. I get my fleece from Puppet Pelts, my, one of my favorite places to get fleece. This original Muppet fleece is very hard to come by now. There's been some uh, manufacturing problems. And so I had a few more pieces, but the, the blues just weren't quite right. So I went through my scraps and I think I have just enough. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I think for this puppet, I want a bit of the nose and the belly, uh, and maybe we'll do some eyelids or a bit of the inside of the ear uh, in the fleece. I think I have enough. And then the rest will be in fur. So it'll kind of look like it's got fur that transitions into some of this blue color every here or there. Um, so the first step is to, I have a, so we have our pattern from our clay version, and we enlarged that, and that made our foam puppet. Uh, and then I customed added some features. So I don't have a pattern at the moment that represents where the foam puppet, the, in, the final puppet is. So I'm gonna custom make another pattern. Like I said, puppets are pretty custom. And what I'm gonna use is I have some scrap fleece, which I buy from that puppet pelts company. That's flawed, so it wouldn't make a good puppet, so I feel good using it. So I'm gonna use this to make a rough pattern of the whole puppet, and I'll use that to cut the actual fur out of. <laughs> It's jumping. Ah. This is going to take quite a while. So I might do this in pieces. Uh, some of this is also a lot of hand sewing. So I might actually go put a movie on and do some of this. But we'll come back together when it's time to show you our new pattern of every single piece of this puppet. Are you excited? I'm very excited. I wonder what you'll sound like. I'm not sure yet. All right, here we go.
Oh, hi everybody. So, a lot has happened uh, in the last two or three hours, um, or whatever it is. So I have, uh, this is where it really starts feeling like I'm uh, Frank making a Frankenstein. I have um, barely enough of my blue fleece. So we have our pattern, which I will, um, I've got a little bit um, rogue. Some of the patterns I make are very symmetrical, so I can make the puppet over and over again. Uh, and this one I could make again, but because I've done some custom foam pieces, it's not completely symmetrical. So I kind of went each piece individually and um, pieced it back together. Uh, and I think it's going to work. So we have every piece cut out. This is one of the arms, two arms. We have the mouth. Now, as I was saying, I want to have some of the mouth and the belly to be in the Muppet fleece. And I have some darts to do and this. I'll actually will stitch from the outside on. And I'll do a, a, something called the Muppet um, stitch which is a way to make darts and make seams disappear. It's a really fun thing you can do with this particular kind of fleece. So I just want the nose to be blue and I'm going to do the inside of the ears in blue I'll put fur on the back side. And then here I've got my blue belly and this is where a dart, I already cut this dart out, but I will do the Muppet stitch. So that seam will disappear giving me one nice big blue belly. And to kind of give you an idea of what's going on, this is half of the head. Let's see if I can line this up for you. It doesn't look great yet, but he's gonna have fur and just the blue nose will be popping out and then it'll be fur down here and then we'll cut all that out. Once I get all of this put together, so now what I have to do, because this fur is so fantastic uh, and thick and curly, I decided I'm gonna hand sew all of this. It'd be, I think it'd be harder to do all the, um, getting all of this through the sewing machine. Um, the tail I think I can, and I think maybe the arms I can. I might do those because those are just straight, almost straight lines. But all of these I'm going to do by hand. Um, so once I get every kind of piece done, here's half the belly. We're gonna be protruding out of the fur. I think it's gonna look really nice. I'm really happy with the colors. Once I have it all put together, I will. we will go to haircut land Another great thing about using fur is um, we can comb it out, we can thin it down in certain places, because it's gonna kind of be a big puffball mess, I think, when I get it all put together. So once I get every piece done, I think we'll look at how it looks, and then we'll probably go in and shave it down. This next part, to save some time, because it's not gonna be the most fascinating thing, and I tend to put movies on when I hand stitch. So I'm just gonna go, and I'll probably meet you back in the morning when I've hand sewn all this tonight, and we'll put this thing together and put some eyes on it and some detail. So um, I'm gonna get pinning and hand sewing. See you soon. Oh, and what am I gonna watch? I might watch The Dark Crystal and the reboot. I've been kind of craving Star Wars lately. I might put Star Wars on or Jurassic Park. It might be a sci-fi night for me. Let's get sewing. <laughs>
Hi everybody, pardon my uh, charging cord. So here we are, we are getting there. I am just sewing and sewing away. We have, um, I'm working on some detail now, putting our ears on. We have our hands and our arms connected. We've got um, all of our, our head and our body sewn together and the fur sewn to the fleece. And so it's almost all one connected thing. I'm putting the other ear on now and then we'll start looking at teeth and tongue and uh, little details, maybe some painting. I don't know yet. Well, I'll take a look at them and play with them a little bit and see we, how it's performing. And then we'll get to do some little detail work, but I think it's coming along nicely. I'm watching uh, The Dark Crystal, Age of Resistance. It's a little scary. Uh, it's one of my favorite shows. It's probably my third time watching it through. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep going. We're getting closer. I think we're uh, almost there. Yay! Hello, and how do you do? Look what we did, we made it, it finally happened. A whole watching of Dark Crystal, the original film, and the entire new series on Netflix, and a bunch of hours of hand sewing, listening to a bunch of podcasts. We have our final monster puppet. He got his eyes on, his teeth I just put on this morning because they had to dry, made them out of Crayola foam clay, it's one of my favorite things to make teeth out of. So when we started, we started with a sketch that we picked the colors of. We went for like a greenish uh, monster. We hand dyed our fur uh, and played with some different shades. There's two shades of fleece in here. Once we sculpted it out of clay, we made a pattern out of our clay armature. And I think they look pretty close. They look a little different once they get furred. He's quite a large puppet, which tends to happen with me. Once we did the clay, we kind of redrew and I made some changes. I was gonna put a tail on him, but he was getting a little heavy and it just seemed to not add as much character as I wanted. If we wanted this puppet to sit down, I would add feet, but I think he plays nicely um, kind of from the waist up. So this is our finished puppet. I think we did pretty good, a puppet from scratch. So now it's time to put him on and see what he looks like when he comes to life. I'm very pleased. I don't know what his name is yet. If you have an idea what his name could be, please put it in our comment box. So take him off his stand and let's see what he's like when it comes to life. All right, put my hand in my custom mouth plate that we put in there. It fits my fingers perfectly. And get my arm rods in here. Oh, oh, hello. How are you? I, I'm here. I made it. Yay. Oh my goodness. Oh. It took so long, but here I am. Look, look how beautiful I am. I'm, I'm, I'm green and blue. Oh, this is so great. Oh, oh, and I, I'm soft. Oh, I'm so, I wish you could feel how soft I am. Oh, and oh, I have a tongue. Ah, I have a tongue. Oh, this is so great. This is so, where am I? What a crazy basement. A crazy person must live here. Hmm. Well, nice to see you all. I hope to see you again. Oh, what a wonderful day. I must explore. Yes, well, thank you so much for watching this. How do you do making a puppet for the stage? Oh, I think it turned out pretty well. I do. Yes, I do. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed and have a fantastic day. Mm -hmm. Wow, a lot of crazy stuff down here. Thanks everybody.